okay, I got the right size pin punch, and I'm not going to tell you there's anything particularly easy about this. Um, it just takes a little bit of doing, takes a little bit of nerve. The other thing I'm going to say is that one should always mark the correct orientation of the cam on the shaft. And you can do that with basically some sort of marker that just gives you a point of reference that when you go back together and case the camshaft moves, that you know the proper orientation. Okay, having done this, one then can start trying to further remove the pin. Well, I'm going to do this actually in real time. I have no idea how easy this is going to be. But for the people who are new to this, remember that if you get stuck, the pin will not move. You can always apply a heat gun or a propane torch to loosen things up um, accordingly. Okay, let's go ahead and see where we're at here. Sorry if I'm hurting anybody's ears. Oh, we're getting good movement of the pin out here. Alrighty then. So it's going out. Now there's going to come a point where your pin... Whoops! See, the pin got stuck here a little bit. Okay. There's going to come a point where... Oh, you know, when you can't see this. Let me move this, let me move this down this way. Alright. There's going to come a point probably can see the pin coming out the bottom there a little bit. There's going to come a point when the pin will not clear the bottom. So you're going to have to rotate the cam a bit to drive the pin out from the side. Um, to do that you're just going to have to lift up on the, on the levers, the clutch releasing levers, and move it the right direction so you can get a little bit of an angle to get it going. Uh, well, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it takes a little bit of doing here. All right, Let's see if I can get a smaller punch now that I've got it started. Yeah. It's probably going to work now. Well, like I said, you have to kind of play with it a little bit. To get it going the way we, the way we need to get it going. Oh, the pin goes out. Done. Okay then. All right. Let me put the pin back where I, in my magnetic parts holder. All right. Pin is out. Okay then. Oh, I think we're a little crooked here. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the cam back in its in its um, its original position with the so it stays put. Okay. So at this point, you have to pull the um, the cam off the shaft. It's just not going to come easy, folks. Um, it does not. It's been on there forever, and you're just going to have to pull it off with a puller. Now there's no way really you're going to be able to see this because the um, the puller's off easily going to be in the way. And it just takes a little bit of finagling. You know, I tried to find a smaller puller over time. They make them, but I find this one works just fine. So and it's coming off. Whoopsies! It's coming off, but the thing got stuck a little bit. Oh, rats. Okay, well... Let's see if I'm lucky enough to get it off with a screwdriver. Probably not. 
It's coming off. There you go. Okay. Cam shaft. The cam is off the shaft. All right. At this point now, we can move to taking off the clamp arm. Okay, let's go ahead and take off the clamp arm. Now, I want you to notice that the selector indicator bracket with the lights here has been removed because, as I said, this is a, an old mechanism. You're going to have to secure that, of course, so that when you uh, move the clamp arm, um, everything remains intact. There's really no simple way, nor would I advise, unsoldering everything feeding the wire so this comes completely off the mechanism but you can but you can quite easily move it off to the side okay there are a few screws that hold the clamp arm in place get to work on that here well as I said I've not actually done taking this one apart here so I may have to get a bigger screwdriver I'm back with a bigger screwdriver Okay, yes, here we go, that's one, isn't it true you never have the tools you need when you start something? Oh well, so it goes. A little plate comes off. There's a fourth screw here. Um, grab a pair of forceps so the screw doesn't go away. Okay, so now we can pull this buddy off. So basically the four screws here, 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 and back there. Pull this little guy off. By the way, there are shims there are shims behind. You'll see them when I pull the when I pull the uh, clamp arm off. Is there are shims between the clamp arm and the cam there that have to be uh, that have to be um, saved. So. Well, because like I said, because this has not been cleaned all that well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to get the clamp, to get the uh, stripper plate free. Hello everybody, I'm back. You can see that I in fact took it off the uh, stripper plate. Now. I have to tell you that getting the stripper plate off of that shaft because this me this mechanism had been in the elements and was um, quite corroded was not an easy task and ultimately what I had to do was a combination of lubrication and using a gear puller but I had to actually put a spacer uh, on one side to get even pressure and was able to pull it off. Um, I would hope normally it's not that difficult. But the other thing I want to comment here is I did pull the entire clamp arm off. I do not suggest you do that. And that's because the wire bundle here that comes down through 
and in here is going to get stretched. Now, like I said, this was a mechanism that was trashed to begin with for demonstration purposes, so I didn't have to worry about that. But you would not normally want to rethread these wires, um, unsolder them, loosen them this way, because that would mean unsoldering the selector um, indicators or the frog and loosening the wires. And you can do what you need to do with the turntable without taking the um, the stripper plate all the way off. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the turntable. Well, I'm gonna have to move the camera, so I'm sorry about jiggling, but If one looks behind the turntable, one can see the rubber grommets. And they are right there. For these to be removed, the turntable has to be pulled forward to free those rubber grommets. Now, the reason why you have to take the stripper plate at all, uh, off at all, to change the rubber grommets is there are two types of rubber grommets that drive the turntable. One is the step variety, and one is the non-step variety. The one that are in there are the non-stepped. Here, I'll show you the stepped. These are the stepped variety. The stepped variety go this way with the little step outwards. You cannot pull the turntable out far enough to put these on with the small end facing the gear with the stripper plate in place. But you can do it if you just move the stripper plate forward enough to, um, to allow clearance. Okay, well let's go ahead and take the turntable off.